Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the pre-match press conference for England. Can I please ask everyone to put themselves on mute and um, before the start of the press conference? And um, I'll be handing over to Danny, and um, we'll be managing the interaction with Joss Butler. Over to you, Danny. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, can we just make sure that everybody's on mute? Um, in terms of uh, some house rules, if you want to request a question, please use the chat facility. It will just be easier for me to manage at this end. Uh, and we'll try and give priority to the UK media are on the call. Um, and then we're going to start with Tim Thornton from Sky Sports News, and then we'll go to David Charlesworth from the Press Association. Go ahead, Tim. Hi, Josh. You okay? Hi, thanks. Uh, a great start then against the, the, the Windies. How much confidence can you take from that? And do you have to maybe temper that a little bit with some realism that tougher tests lie ahead? Yeah, absolutely. We take lots of, of confidence from the first game. Um, it's obviously fantastic to get a win on the board. And um, you know, we know West Indies didn't play anywhere near their best, but um, you know, we focus on ourselves a lot. And I thought everything we wanted to happen came off um, brilliantly well. And, and we take that confidence. But of course, we, we park that now. We um, prepare well for our next match against Bangladesh and um, we'll be fully ready for, for the big challenge that they'll throw at us. We know that Bangladesh are, are capable of an upset. Does that stop complacency creeping in? And how important in tournament cricket is it to build that winning momentum? Yeah, of course, you know, winning momentum is vital, isn't it? And, um, so the way the tournament's set out, there's not much room for mistakes. But uh, the beauty of T20 cricket is anyone can beat anyone on their day. Um, an individual can can win a match for, for their team. So, um, but no, we prepare well. We, you know, we're a very level team. Um, we don't get too high, don't get too low. And um, we'll try and bring our level of intensity, which always gives us the best chance of winning the game. Can I ask you about Ben Stokes, his return uh, for the Ashes on a, a personal level and on a, a cricketing level as well. How big a boost is that? Yeah, it's a massive boost for, for everyone. Um, you know, I think first and foremost uh, for Ben um, to be in a position where he's happy and healthy, uh, both, both physically and uh, mentally to, to resume his cricket career is, is brilliant. Um, as a teammate, as a friend, um, as fans of cricket, um, you know, I think everyone is going to be delighted to see Ben Stokes back on the field. Um, so, yeah, we're, it's a massive boost for, for England, for the Ashes and for cricket as a whole. Thank you, Josh. Cheers. All the best. Thanks, Tim. Let's go to David Charles, please. Thanks, Danny. Hi, Josh. Um, taking a knee has become a bit of a hot-button issue in the last couple of hours um, as Quinton de Kock has refused to do so and withdrawn from South Africa's uh, fixture against the Windies. Um, are you able to say whether you'll be taking a knee tomorrow and, and for the rest of the tournament? Uh, yes, I think you know our position as as a team is um, you know we stand against any form of of discrimination. Um, I think what we'd like to do as as a team is a moment of unity, which um, we did um, at times during our summer. Um, we wanted to reciprocate an opposition. The West Indies like to take a knee, so we wanted to reciprocate that um, in the first game. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can can make some form of of start versus a side in our culture as a team. We of course stand against any any form of discrimination and. I'm um, very passionate about that. Mm. Can I just, just one more, just to follow up on that. Do you think it's it's up to cricket boards to make the demands of players in this sort of areas as cricket South Africa has done with its players? How, how would you feel about it? I'm not sure, to be honest. I think um, I can only speak about myself and our team. Um, I think it's something we, we feel strongly about. It's an important part of our culture as a team. Um, and that's all I can, can say on that. Fair enough. Uh, just back onto the cricket then. How, how are you feeling at the crease? And do, do you think the break of not playing in the IPL has, has really been beneficial for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. Um, you know, I think it's, I've um, enjoyed that break. I thought it was, it was good for me. Um, you know, I think in, in an ideal world, you'd probably come into a tournament um, like this with maybe a little bit more cricket behind you. And of course, the IPL being here in the UAE would, would be the perfect um, sort of uh, lead into a tournament but uh, no I think I'm in a position now where I'm experienced enough I've played in these conditions before um, you know, I feel like I know what it takes in, in practice to to get me in a position where I feel like I, I can go out there and perform and um, I've been feeling good I feel like I'm hitting the ball well in the nets and um, you know, just trying to use my experience. Lovely thanks for your time.
Thanks, David. Let's go to Matt Roller from Crick Info. Go ahead, Matt. Um, hi, Joss. Um, a lot of teams have opened the bowling with left arm spin against you and Jason over the last 18 months or so, including West Indies. Um, could you just tell us a bit about the challenge of facing left arm spin with the new ball and your method against it? Yeah, um, I think it's, it's something that we'll see throughout this tournament. Um, you know, spin playing a prevalent part in the power play. Um, and yeah, of course, the challenge is the, the ball spinning away from the bat is a, is a good matchup in, in the cricket, obviously with the new ball. Uh, some can skid on with the angle. Um, you know, potentially there may be a little bit of spin as well. So um, I think it's been sort of really clinical with picking length and um, looking to to be positive with that option. Um, and also I think we have a, a you know one strength of our team is the flexibility on our order. And um, you know if, if that became a, a trend, I guess we could try and counter that um, with a change of order as well. Um, and Bangladesh obviously picked a couple of left arm spinners in their last game. Is that something you've been preparing for, um, for ahead of tomorrow's game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we prepare um, you know, specifically for the opposition and also for the conditions we face. I think spinners, you know, it's obviously going to play a huge part in this tournament. Um, and of course, Bangladesh have a couple of left arm spinners, so been yeah, been practicing against that lots in the nets and uh, trying to get some some plans in place. Cheers. OK, let's go. John Etheridge, The Sun, and then Dean Wilson, Daily Mirror. Go ahead, John. Joss, hi. Uh, do you know what form precisely the, the moment of unity will take? No, I don't. Um, so, so I don't think um, that's something we'd like to do as a, as a team. Um, I think that um, you have to get some clearance from the ICC um, for that as well. But uh, as I said, we it's something we'd like to do as a team, but I don't know the specifics behind it at the moment. Okay, fair enough. And, and just on, on Ben, if I may, um, Ben Stokes, I mean, uh, there's been obviously a lot of uncertainty about the Ashes tour and who, who will go and who won't go and that sort of stuff. But now, apart from perhaps Joffre and maybe Ollie Stone, it's pretty much full strength England squad. So that must give the guys plenty of cause for optimism. So I just say the last bit again. Uh, the, uh, uh, how optimistic now about uh, are you about England's chances in Australia? Now you've got a pretty much a full strength squad. Yeah, it's, it's great to have a, a pretty much full strength side. Um, and uh, but no, I think personally and individually, I'm very focused at the moment on the World Cup. Um, Ashes is next in, in line, um, but at the moment we need to to fully focus on a World Cup. It's a, a world tournament. Um, we want to perform well in this tournament, so. Um, to be thinking too much about the ashes right now, I don't think it's the right thing to be doing. Absolutely. Okay, thanks so much. Cheers. Okay, we'll go to Dean and Simon Burton. Uh, yeah, hi, Joss. Um, it's qu quite an unusual situation to, to find yourself in a, in a tournament um, to face a team that you've never actually played any T20 matches against before, but you've never played Bangladesh in a T20 match. So how would it be like to to play your first game against them? Yeah, we, we know the, the challenges they'll pose. We've played against them lots, um, obviously, in, in 50 over cricket. Um, and um, you know, we know they're a dangerous side. They've uh, got a lot of experience, I think, in T20 cricket as well. Um, some very good players um, playing quite a specific style that is quite unique to them, I feel, as well. Um, but uh, no, we, we focus, obviously, and try and plan for the opposition, but at the same time, we focus a lot on ourselves trying to get our level intensity to the place it needs to be. Um, I think we feel confident as a group that when we get that right, um, no, matter, no matter who we, we play against, it's going to give us the best chance of success. So um, you know, we, we plan as, as we need to, but we focus a lot on ourselves. You obviously landed on a pretty successful combination against the Windies. Um, Chris Silverwood said that Mark Wood is, will be fit for... For selection tomorrow, have you, have you got any idea whether he, he might play? Are there any other injury concerns? And um, what are your sort of thoughts between yourself and Owen about the the kind of balance of, of the side? Yeah, I think the you know, the side's balanced well, um, and I think whichever sort of route we go down, um, the side is, is going to be nicely balanced. Um, I think um, you know, Woody's obviously one of those guys with express pace, and, and we know what a what a factor he can play. In matches when he's fully fit so um, of course we want to be picking from a, a full fully strength squad um, and everyone being fit so um, that gives you know Chris Silverwood and, and Morgs the, the best chance to, to pick the side that they see best um, for the conditions so um, yeah obviously you know, we'll have to 
pick a side that is, is best for the conditions we take uh, face tomorrow in a day game. And just a final thought on that from me, you know, when things go so well in a tournament and, and you put in that kind of performance, there's always a temptation not to to change a, a winning team. Is that the kind of mentality that you think Owen and, and Chris might might have? Or are you very much keen to disregard um, the previous game and, and literally just concentrate solely on, on, the, on who's in front of you? No, we will always sort of focus on the next game and, and solely what the next game demands. So, um, you know, if the conditions are drastically different, um, you know, we wouldn't be afraid of, of playing a, a different makeup of the team if, if we had to. Um, I think we cover most bases with the side we picked uh, in the first match. Um, but, you know, as I said, conditions are incredibly different. We, we'd be happy to change the team. Um, I can't foresee them being too different, to be honest. But, um, you know, it's great to have a, what we hope is a fully fit squad to choose from. Thank you. Okay, due to time constraints, we'll just take one question each going forward. So Simon Burton from The Guardian, then Julian Geyer from AFP, please. Hi, Joss. Uh, your first and only daytime game tomorrow. Um, can you just tell me if uh, you've changed timing of training uh, to kind of specifically work up to it and uh, anything you're doing to deal with daytime heat? No, I think... Uh... Training sessions are sort of planned in um, by the ICC, so we don't have. Uh, we, we trained a lot in the day in, in Oman. We were training in the day um, yesterday. We trained in the daytime when the match would be on tonight as a, an evening practice, but, which is optional. Um, but no, I think we, we obviously the guys who have played in the IPL have, have played day games and been quite used to that. Um, so the due is not going to be a factor in those matches. Um, but no, we, we've all been. Uh, either in Oman for a period of time in the heat um, or guys have been playing in the IPL, so everyone's sort of quite accustomed to what to expect from the conditions. OK, let's move on to Julian, please. Um, hello, Joss. You talked earlier about Bangladesh having a specific style of game. I just wondered if you could say what you thought that was and who in their side has particularly impressed you. Yeah, well, I think uh, what I mean by it is, is Generally, spin heavy side. They generally play a lot of finger spins with some great experience. For example, Shaki Balasan, who's, who's played a, a huge number of T20 games and all around the world. Um, and generally, you know, the batsmen, say, as a, as a rule at times, they're generally quite very strong square of the wicket. So, um, yeah, I think I could say that players such as Shakib and Mushfiq Rahim, Mamadullah, they've, they've been around for a, for a little while. So Mustafiza is a, is a threat with his left arm bowling and, and an excellent slower ball. So um, yeah, that's generally what I, I mean by that. Um, but yeah, and like I said, a team full of, of some match winners. Thank you. OK, we'll go to uh, Bangladesh media. We'll go to Ekush Tapadir and then Mohamed Jubair. Go ahead, Ekush. Hi, Josh. Uh, this will be very first T20 international meeting between Bangladesh and England. How do you assess Bangladesh team regarding condition and current form? Thank you. Yeah, I think Bangladesh are a strong team. Um, I think over the last few years, um, you know, especially at home, they've had a lot of success in, in T20 cricket. Um, you know, coming to conditions here, I think, which um, you know, will be quite familiar to, to a number of, of the players and, and sort of um, you know what they generally expect to face at home. So, uh, And as I just mentioned, some, some really experienced players in the team. So we're expecting a really tough challenge. And then the last question, uh, Jubair, please, from... Um... Hey, Josh, uh, this is Jubair from Prothomalva. You have come across a few different Bangladesh sites uh, so far in your career, famously in the 2015 World Cup and later as well. So, But this time, this team, this Bangladesh side is uh, a bit up and down in terms of form and confidence. How do you see them? Do you Do you feel more confident because they are under pressure? No, no, not at all. And, uh, it's, uh, I think we fully expect to, to face Bangladesh at their best tomorrow. Um, you know, like I said, just mentioned, they've been very strong at home in, in recent years. Um, conditions here are generally quite similar. So um, now we're expecting a, a really good performance from Bangladesh tomorrow and a, and a very tough game. Okay, I think we're done. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank okay. you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.